Kelly here and I am back with another video for Whimsy Stamps. This week we are having a new challenge and it's called With Love. So I am using this stamp set. It's called Snowman Love. So they kind of fit together. When I saw those two, um, the little snow couple, I guess I'll, we'll call them, cuddling and all cute on that, all I could think was that they should be in a snow globe. So I don't have a snow globe die per se, but I'm going to use a circle die to kind of make my own. I'm just going to get out my cuddle bug and I go ahead and uh, taped my circle down with some washi tape. Washi tape isn't going to peel up my paper. Um, it's just going to be a nice little placeholder. You can also use post-it notes or um, um, painter's tape. Painter's tape will work too. So here you can see the way I'm loading my cuddle bug is so that the cutting plate is only on the top portion of the circle and I can run the whole thing through and then there's only pressure on the top portion and then it looks like this when it comes out and I just want to make sure I'm looking at it through the light so I can double check that it is wide enough and then I'm just going to use my um, Fisker's uh, paper trimmer and this has a wire in it so I can see exactly where I'm cutting. I can line it up with the edge um, of the cut circle and then just go ahead and cut it down to be the um, traditional snow globe shape, rounded on top, flat on the bottom. I'm going to do the other side and then finish it off by doing the middle. I love this Fiskars trimmer. This is probably one of the best purchases I ever made and that wire guide makes it super, super easy to just see exactly where you're cutting. So once that's all done, um, I'm going to go ahead and pull that out and then I'm just going to, um, I compared it to the other piece to make sure it fit again. I'm always double checking. Here I wanted, there's snowflakes in the background of the stamp and there's a red rubber stamp. I'm using my Misty to stamp it. I'm stamping it in Versamark ink onto um, just some white cardstock and it's because I wanted to do a distress ink background and I wanted those snowflakes in the background to be white so that they looked like they were falling down inside the snow globe. So once I get that all uh, down and I'm happy with the way that it's stamped, I'm going to go ahead and heat emboss it with some white embossing powder. I keep mine in just a simple container with a spoon so I can just pick it up, dust it on, um, I'll tap off any extra and then I will heat emboss it. Um, it's just, it's a fun way to kind of mix your backgrounds because I really like black outlines and I, I think that that helps your images um, stand out. But I just really thought that those snowflakes would be super cute. I mean, there's not black snowflakes. I didn't want to stamp my snowflakes in black. So once that's all done, I'm going to move on to the distress inking. I'm going to use a couple of different blues. I'm going to start out with the uh, tumbled glass and I'm using a um, mini ink blending tool. I still don't know if I love these, but I'm trying them, trying to use them because I bought them and I already paid for them. So just trying to, to use what I've already spent my money on. So I always start off the page and then work onto um, my paper as far down as I want to go. These mini blending tools. I keep wanting to say mini mister. I don't know why. Maybe it's the only words I say mini in front of. But anyway, um, I don't feel like they give me great color, like great saturation when I'm going in with them the first time. And this could be just because um, the ink pads are still, or the foam pieces are still kind of new. So maybe they haven't uh, absorbed as much color as my older pieces have. I don't know, but I just feel like it takes forever to get any sort of color saturation. So I ended up going over it twice to be happy with it. So the second color I used was Salty Ocean, and then we're going to move on to Blueprint Sketch, which is a darker blue, but it's brighter. Um, I used to use faded jeans a lot, but it's more grayed out. This is more like a bright royal blue, and it's really, really pretty. I didn't mask the snow at the bottom. I'm just being careful not to go over it. If that's something that you don't like, trust yourself, you can always stamp out the image again on a, and create a mask to um, keep your snowbank clean. I felt like I could get close enough uh, for government work without having to take the time to mask it. So like I said, I, I end up going over it twice, and this is me just going back over it. Those snowflakes just weren't popping like I wanted them to uh, with the color saturation that I had the first time over and I guess it's kind of like an ombre dark blue to up to light blue um, 
and I'll of course do the tumbled glass one more time so everything blends pretty nicely. And then after that, I'm going to set this, well, oh no, I'm going to do the snow banks on the bottom. So I did add a little bit of tumbled glass to the bottom. I didn't go all the way up to the top, but I didn't want it just to be stark white. I just thought that it looked just a little strange. So I'm not adding a ton of shading, but just a little bit under those snow banks. And then I am going to set that piece aside and start Copa coloring. So I stamped the image again in um, Memento Tuxedo Black ink. It's Copic friendly. And then I'm just going to get in here and get started. I picked cool grays to not only color my snowmen and lady, snow lady, white, um, but I'm also going to use it to do my black. So here I'm just shading basically either side of their bodies um, with my C1. And then I'm going to start adding a little bit more depth with my C3. I use the flicking technique, uh, really light pressure with just the tip of my marker. And I was shading them as if their uh, light source would be almost directly in front of them, like shining right on them. I think that's traditionally when, how most people color when they're not doing, um, when they don't know where their light source is. I think a lot of times we have a tendency to put the light source right in the center. And I chose it that way because they're going to be, um, like I said, in a snow globe. So I felt like that would make the most sense. Whenever you're shading white, you're only putting in what the shadows are. Uh, you still want to leave some pretty large white areas for your highlight. Here they look super gray just because um, there's no other color on here. But they'll get better. I was trying to leave a highlight on the like top right hand side that of his hat. That didn't end up working out for me. so. D just disregard it. I'm going to color over it in a minute and then nobody will ever be any the wiser. And that is why I do all of my shading the first time around with my lightest marker. <laughs> because then if I don't like it, I can color over it and nobody knows the difference. So um, these are the same uh, C markers that I used for the snowman's bodies, except now I'm using some of the deeper ones as well. The um, C5, C7, and C9. And this is going to give the illusion of a shiny black hat um, just because we're going to leave that highlight. So I mean, I love the way Copics work together and how they blend and, and you know, you can use different um, or the same markers to get such different looks. They're just amazing tools. So if you don't have them, um, try them. Even if you think that like, oh, I'm not going to be any good at this. Practice makes perfect. I promise. So here I'm going to move on and do some reds. Um, I wanted to do her hat red. I feel like she's a very fashionable snow lady. So I wanted to give her some color. And I'm trying to keep, again, that highlight more toward the center. Um, for me personally, I'm not, I'm not great at this, this light source highlighting kind of thing. Um, as far as where it's going to come from or how realistic it's going to look, I just do the best that I can. And if I'm happy with it at the end, you know, at the end, then awesome. Um, so I would recommend you do the same thing. Just, you know, color it however you think it's going to look best. And then as long as you're happy at the end of the day, then that's fantastic. That's all you're looking for. So I did the holly berries, um, red as well. Because, well, I mean, they're red, right? They're holly berries. So um, I just added a little bit of shading onto, like, one side of them. I tried to keep it pretty consistent. And I didn't want to go over them a ton because it's such a small area. And red bleeds like crazy. It's it's very difficult to get red up. Um, and you're going to see here, I'll, I make the little mistake. And um, my mar red marker slides up into his, my snowman's face. And I was able to get it out with a zero marker. It just took me a little bit of time. So anytime you're trying to pull up the color, you want to hit it with your zero marker, let it dry, do it again. You want to keep pushing it back towards um, where it kind of bled out from. See, there's my boo-boo. So I was able to get it mostly up. As you can see here, it's, uh, well, you could see if my hands weren't in the way. Here, um, it's it's pretty much gone. So and since I outlined all of my images, I was able to make sure it was completely gone. So I'm using some yellow greens for the holly leaves. Um, 
And then after I, I did the first one, I didn't feel the need to show you the, her, the one on her hat. They're the same thing. And I was trying to come up with a color that I thought would be like complementary for um, the blue in the background and the red and the green. And so I settled on purple. I thought that it would be, um, it would flow nicely with the red and the green as well as the blue. I try to limit my color palette when I am coloring larger images. It just helps it feel a little bit more cohesive. And again, I'm trying to keep that highlight in the same spot um, as I did on the black hat so it looks um, like it goes together. I did the Her Flower uh, purple as well. And this is, you know, just a really small area, so the shading went by pretty quickly. And then um, I also did Her Scarf purple. So I try to do like three pops of color. So three um, pops of red, three pops of purple. Uh, the odd numbers are more pleasing to the eye so um, I try to do what I can to work in um, odd numbers because if you've probably heard me say this before if you do it in even your brain automatically starts trying to pair them and uh, doesn't allow it to like freely move around the, your card or scrap of page or whatever art project you happen to be working on so then once her scarf is um, all done I went ahead, I colored her button, and for some reason, I don't know why I don't have that on film, but I just did it super quick, so I promise you didn't miss out too much of anything, but I did it the green so that I would have to, you know, complete that little uh, visual triangle of the green, one, two, three. Her, um, and his nose is going to be um, orange, and my darkest color is actually a red, but it works very nicely with the oranges that I picked. So don't be afraid to mix your color families. Like sometimes you can get, end up with something that you really love. And that's probably my favorite orange combination. It starts with a yellow and it ends with a red. <laughs> For their arms, um, there's obviously not much to shade here. So I just did two colors. I did the uh, E59 just a little closer to the base of their bodies and called it a day. I outlined, like I said earlier, all of my images. So I'm going to start doing that. They, um, this image is pretty easy. Everything's pretty straightforward. Not too many tricky parts. And I just feel like it, um, I say feel like it a lot. I feel a lot of things apparently, folks. Um, but anyway, it makes your colors pop a little bit more, cleans up your edges. And since I'm a clean and simple card maker, I need all the clean edges I can get. So here we're adding some uh, clear wink of Stella for some shimmer. And then I'm going to go ahead and fussy cut this out. I always cut off all the extra around my image before I fussy cut it. It just makes it easier uh, for me to cut. It doesn't pull on the paper. And then I'm going to use a foam pad and a uh, Cutter B X-Acto knife uh, to cut out the little pieces, parts uh, where it's connected. And I highly recommend doing this before you cut out the whole image because otherwise um, it does pull on the paper and it makes it more likely to tear. When I remove my pieces, I always do it from the back just in case one of them happens to be stuck and pulls on the paper. I don't want it to pull my image. Uh, it's fine if it rips on the back. Nobody's going to see it. And then I always give myself a little bit of extra working room if I can uh, next to like the arms, anywhere that's going to be real fragile. So I kind of just pre-cut it. Here I'm making sure everything fits in nice and that I'm happy with the way that it looks. And then I'm going to, um, after I adhere them down, I'm going to start working on the shaker portion of it. Like I told you, I thought that they would look super cute in a snow globe, but what's a snow globe without falling snow? Or in this case, glitter. So after I get that down, and I wasn't... Um, you want to make sure it's completely dry before, like when you're gluing an image on top of your background, you want to make sure it's completely dry before you start adding your glitter. But once your glitter's in, as long as your image is adhered flat, there shouldn't be any issue with like your glitter or sequins or whatever you're putting into your shaker card getting stuck. I'm just using some Tombow Mono Multi Glue around the uh, die cut portion and I'm going to adhere um, some clear acetate. This is just uh, leftover packaging that I happen to have on my desk because I'm cheap and I don't buy acetate. I have what I have. Speaking of cheap, I had run out of my um, Scotch uh, foam mounting tape, so I'm kind of cheating. I am using craft fun foam that I cut into strips, and I'm putting, um, I don't even know the brand name. I can't remember. It's just double-sided tape, craft tape. 
So I originally started cutting it, and then I realized that I could kind of form it around the window. It was um, very pliable. So that's how I ended up adding most of it. And it was pretty uh, pretty easy. I, here, I just didn't have the uh, tape down far enough, so I had to add a little bit more and cut that off. I did the whole um, background like that, but you want to make sure when you're doing the shaker card that the shaker portion is pe peeled, sealed off, because um, otherwise your glitters and sequins and everything will escape. The rest of it I just added so it would all be the same um, height. Here I'm adding more uh, double-sided tape to adhere it actually to my card base. So I just went around and added that, cut it off as I needed. That's the completed shaker window. I'm going to go ahead and I cut down my uh, snowman because it was a little high up and I needed to scooch it down a little bit. So I went ahead and cut it off so that way I could push position it where I want, where it was going to best look for my um, shaker card. So here we have some uh, clear sequins by Pretty Pink Posh. I'm going to throw in a couple of those, um, the smaller ones, and then a couple of the larger ones. You can basically fill this with whatever you want. You know, whatever kind of sequins you have. Sequins are all the rage now. So um, almost everybody has them in some form. And then here I have this jumbo glitter. I actually bought this at Walmart for like $2. Don't mind the mess that it made. I just kind of scooped it all back into the center and it was fine. Um, I didn't expect it to come out that fast. It got me. And then I'm going to go ahead and uh, peel off the back portion of the uh, sticky tape. And then I will adhere that down to my card. I find it easier to adhere it from the side so that I can see that all of my edges are lining up. And then once that's on there, feel free to shake it around, check it out. Um, there was quite a bit of glitter in there, but I feel like it's a big window, so that's okay. So, yeah, I, I like that glitter a lot. It's iridescent. It looks kind of pink or yellow um, based upon, like, where the light hits it. I'm going to use the um, Sending and Wishes set from Simon Says Stamp for my sentiment. I die cut the Sending from um, W plus 9's coal mine uh, cardstock and then I'm just adding little dots of glue on the back of it. it took me a minute to get started my glue was not uh, not liking me for some reason so once I have that all dotted on then I'll go ahead and add it to the card I just thought that it would be really cute to just sit on top of there and then I'm going to stamp the second portion of the sentiment right onto the cardstock I'm going to tell you the only reason that I can do this is because there is a large foam piece on the bottom, so it's completely solid. If I had done tape and there was gaps in between it, I could not stamp on top, stamp on top of it because the stamp would skip. So just keep that in mind. Here, the rest of the sentiment is just going to go right underneath that sending. So it's a sending you love and hugs. And then that's going to be the card for today. So I hope that you'll join us over at the Whimsy Stamps blog for the challenge. And I hope you enjoyed the video. I will catch you guys later. Bye.